Skid Steer, Part 2. 1993 Bobcat 440B. The engine is a 670cc Predator. The first video I talked about the template that was a cardboard meant to cut out the bolts and put the own engine down. It worked. It's in there and it's solid. Keep this in mind. With that template, I didn't have to figure out where the holes were going to go. On the right side of the of the skid steer, when you put the engine in, there's the original hole for the engine and the original hole for the motor mount. You stick your bolt through and this tells you where the rest of your bolts are going to be. So you stay with your first bolt. So you don't you stay with the first one and this will guide you through the rest of them. I used a cardboard. I made a template. I traced around the engine. Put the engine on a cardboard. Traced around it and the holes. Took the cardboard. Put it on the motor mount. This plate. Dropped a bolt through it so it doesn't move as much. Got a, mat, a marker. And put the holes. Of course I could not put this hole in on this side. Because this motor mount plate is missing. It's it's a cutout. It's it's there originally and naturally. But the other three bolts are in. And I know this is going to hold. Why? Because this is original plate. That comes on this skid steer also. The first bolt lines up perfect with the motor. The second one will not. And neither will the bottom ones. You have to find those yourself. But being that it lines up naturally here and naturally here, it feels like this is meant to be. Well, after removing the motor, I made a cardboard template. And with the cardboard plate, I cut a hole and slid the cardboard on this motor. I had to stab it with a pin to find the right hole. And then I ran the bolt through it. I screwed the bolt. I screwed the cardboard onto the engine. Now... I had to find where the other holes were at with the pin stabbing it. I didn't use all four, not one, two, the bottom one, three, and four. I only used the outside three. Here's something I got to tell you. Check this out. On your engine, you're going to find a female thread area where your bolt goes through. So this is number one. This is number two. And the third one is hidden behind the plate. So one, two, and three. What these are, they're different sizes. So this is a large, medium, and a small one. And how I discovered this is when I cut the hole to the bottom to fit to the engine on here. I took a bolt, another bolt, slid it in to screw it, and it was wobbling in there. I took the motor off, and I needed to know if the threads were damaged on this motor. It turned out it was not. It turned out there's a large, a medium, and a small so when you stab holes through your template of your cardboard keep that in mind that's why there's three holes large medium and small and it's the same thing around the whole engine i stuck with the mediums because they were fine of course now that i poked a hole i don't want to put all kinds of holes in this plate so i'm gonna have to go get a large bolt and i'm only going to use the three and the three on the bottom and that's solid enough so guess what it worked as for the shaft the shaft here Here's the pulley, and this is the original pulley that came off the original engine, and it does not fit, right? The, pull, the pulley is too large in diameter, and the shaft is too skinny. And so I was going to go to a hardware store or a place that sells lawnmower, does repair, repair work on two-stroke cylinder engines, which are lawnmowers, weed whackers, snow blowers, and ask if they have a sleeve. Which, this is what a sleeve looks like. It looks like it. It has a cut down the middle. And what it does is it's an adapter. It slides on, on top. Slides on the shaft. And it fills in the void of the diameter of your pulley. And your pulley fits on. You're not going to believe this. I was going to take the throttle cable. Did you know that most of these go-karts and mini bikes, you could actually take an old mini bike i mean an old mountain bike take the brake cable off from the back well not the front the back and it's long enough to run a throttle body on your mini bike your go-kart and guess what it's going to run it on this skid steer while i was looking at the throttle cable there was this sleeve 
where the mountain bike seat goes. The seat was missing off the mountain bike, and I saw this adapter in there, and I kind of, I was looking at it, and I said, wow, that's similar to the sleeve that goes inside of the pulley that goes onto the shaft. These are the numbers I was on. It's kind of awkward, but off a mountain bike, the sleeve fits. The pulley goes on, and I don't believe it. Now, I got to cut a little bit more so the pin fit slides through perfect, but it worked. So, while well, we discovered something new, another another uh, shortcut or a hack of some sort to get this to work. Take a look at that firewall plate. Remember when it was out and I had it against the wall, it was black? Well, I, I didn't sand it down to the metal. I just cleaned it up with a Scotch-Brite and wiped it down and I spray painted it white. And I also had orange paint that I was going to use for the door and the wheels. Once the white paint dried, masked it off with a square and I spray painted a, an, an orange square now being at the plate is now white and it stands out the orange paint that's where the oil coolant was going to go that I was telling you about so I drilled a hole and another one fitted some bolts to the back and screwed the oil coolant radiator down looks like a radiator uh, pretty cool but it really worked if you do not have this metal plate and you're missing this plate, get a cardboard and cut the cardboard to fit in the door. Now notice the plate, the fire we call this the firewall. The firewall plate doesn't go all the way down and it's made of metal. This is the original one. So it only goes so far down. You could go further with it, but I'm guessing not too far because of those hydraulic arms there. We're going to get to that here in a second. But the plate fit on. There was the three natural holes at the top, so three bolts, two, and number three. And look at the coolant fit on. So now I just got to put the hoses. Look at that. Put the hoses up on. Wow, that was a great idea. But there's something else I got to tell you. You're going to want to take this firewall further down, right, to cover all this? Don't do it. Do you see this? That's a hydraulic. It looks like a horseshoe. The paddles that steer this that steer this skid steer or bobcat is what controls this look when i pull it look it goes forward and it goes back look i'm pushing it and it comes back and forward and let me see what it goes to it goes to the paddles so inside of this skid steer here's the paddle forward and back and you have both passenger and driver side which is left to right and not only does that move this, looks like a, the letter C, like a horseshoe, but there's one also on the right side. So if you don't stick with that original hole and you want to push this engine further back, that hydraulic paddle that you go forward and back in the, in the cab will hit the engine. I know this. So if you stay with the nature of it, Stick with the original hole and stick with the original hole. That's both on this plate and that. You're not going to believe it. It's like it's meant to be. Everything fits just fine. Well, we're going to see on the next video as I hook up the throttle body and the electrical system. Because I don't want to start the skid steer or bobcat, we'll call it a bobcat, out here from the back of the door. I want to run the cables through the original hole on the firewall. If you look up there, there's a hole. And I'm gonna run both the electrical cables out and the key ignition that originally came with this, I'm just gonna extend the wires. I'll show you the video on that where we could start the bobcat up from in the cab and the throttle body. Now this throttle body, this is what's gonna get you. This throttle body is activated, the, the butterfly, by pulling it out of the cab watch this room room it would be nice if it went the opposite direction but it goes this way so that means the cable has to curve and then go into the firewall but we'll see that in part three video so guess what the motor's fastened down there's the bolts to prove it the bolts on the bottom it worked so oh and have a look at this
the door closes no kidding and we got about if i was to say we got roughly about an inch difference now i'm gonna go ahead and put the camera into the cab to see if you can see the distance of the motor and the door look at that distance it was like i said an inch look at let's get this open and gently close it and it click you heard it click and click and close it again Put, let me push on it and there we go and this closes even though this is slightly bent in which is called a concave i did have to take remove the door put it face down on a board so it doesn't scratch the outside too bad and jump up and down on it and i discovered something once you bend metal it's manipulated metal stretches it really does so even though i jumped on the inside up and down it kept its original form so the only thing that was lost from here were calories and energy <laughs> so the trick is is you got to get a sledgehammer put a t-shirt over the sledgehammer so as you hit the inside of the door it'll help reshape and reflex the metal the shirt is so you don't scratch the paint and cause further damage but as i jumped up and down and i hit certain areas of the door i realized the door was going the concave was reversing and that's progress to get the door off it is not a phillips it's not a flathead look at that it's not a hexagon it's not even an allen wrench nothing screws these pins don't screw in but if we look closer Look at those vertical lines that are going around this uh, door hinge, the pin. The lines go up and down. So that means this does not screw clockwise or counterclockwise. It don't screw at all. It, it sinks in. So I'm guessing this door has ribs on the orange, which it does. It hints why the vertical lines. So the way to get this out is to put a pin on the bottom, something, a piece of metal, and you got to get a, a sledgehammer, a heavy hammer, and keep hitting it upwards. Put some WD-40 on the bolt ahead of time or some PB blaster, whatever you like using to help you remove that pin because I could not get this out in 20 hits. It literally took like 27 hits and it popped up. The bottom one was even worse because it was rusted. So the bottom one, you don't have much movement of the sledgehammer as you hit it up. My opinion, my advice, don't start with the top one you got enough playroom to hit that up start with the hardest one which would be the bottom one because if you could get that bottom one out you could get the top one also well this video is going to help you if you're messing with this type of skid steer which is a 440b 440b i searched youtube google i could not find any videos on this so this is um i'm learning as i go along I'm experimenting and it, everything seems to be working okay and it's working out. So I'll see you in part three where we do the throttle cable and the choke along with electrical to start the engine. So be safe in all you do.